Now, where were you born? New Orleans, Louisiana. Still reside in New Orleans? Yes, sir. Certain part you represent? Downtown. Now, growing up for you in New Orleans, can you paint that picture for us? What was that like? Um, growing up in New Orleans, is, it's, it's like a beautiful, ugly thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, the culture is so rich and beautiful, like Second Lines and Mardi Gras and <coughs> Bayou Classic. And I grew up in the era watching Baby and Master P kind of do their thing, like, you know, and the hot boys was popping. So it was like a certain type of pride within the city, like growing up, like <clears throat> from all aspects of it. But the ugly part about it, like, you know, murder, that's just, it's numbing, you know what I'm saying? Like having loved ones, lost to gun violence and stuff like that, like that shit normal. Like people you grew up with getting life and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like little girls turning tricks and shit like that. That shit is normal and it's not, it's, 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 it's like, it's crazy that that type of shit in our culture it's numbing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's like having PTSD, like, you know, without being diagnosed, like, you know, seeing somebody getting blown off, like, that's normal for a square, not even somebody that's in the streets, like, it's just normal for a native to be exposed to things that people shouldn't be exposed to, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by, it's like a beautiful disaster. Growing up, was there any point you or your family could move away from this environment? Hell nah, we was poor as fuck. <laughs> like, like, you know, it, it's like, my mom's always said, like, she always tell me, like, I try to keep you away from the hood so we lived around the corner. You know what I'm saying? So even living coincide with it. It's just New Orleans is one big ghetto. Like, you know, whether people like it or not, like it's it's no good part, quote, quote unquote, whether even in the garden district that's like uptown, rich area, like motherfuckers still getting robbed and killed and shit like that. So it's just like even like just moving away ain't an option. Mom's probably fucking making seven dollars an hour catching a bus going to work and shit like that so you know and, and coincide a lot of people um learn to fend for themselves at a young age because of that shit like you going to school with bobos niggas clowning you about that you know what i'm saying like bitch you got on bobos niggas laughing niggas want jays niggas want gucci proud of all that shit you know what i'm saying so moving away wasn't the fucking option it is what it is what are bobos? Bobos is some ragged ass fucking shoes that you don't want to wear, some no names. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like the Vans with, that's not Vans. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's fucking bobos. Like, you know, I had a pair of bobos, like real shit. You know what I'm saying? And uh, niggas clown me out the gym. And I never liked that feeling. So I learned how to get it on my own. And we'll talk about that in a second. Yeah. Financially, you grew up in poverty. Definitely. Was your family ever able to move into a higher class of finance? So were they able to ever move up to lower middle class, middle class, upper middle class? Was that ever? I mean, you know, I, I could say this, like my pops was able to. Like my mom and my pops was like two different households. But by the time my pops like really start making cheese and shit. Like, I was grown by then. Like, you know, it wouldn't, it ain't affect me. So I I grew up lower middle class my whole life, really. You know what I'm saying? Shit changed for my father getting a better job and, you know, mom's advancing. But by the time they did that shit, it was over for me. I was already, like, getting my own. Your parents were separated yeah, at some Yeah, my point. parents were separated. They, they fucking split. I probably wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even crawling yet, you hear me? So, but you know, my pops was always there for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I can't never take that away. I can't imagine life 
without my pops' influence. You know what I'm saying? So. You lived with mom. Yeah, I, I, man, actually, my situation quite different. Like, I live with my mom and my pops. Like, my mom went through a point of time where, uh, you know, she was going through some hardships and shit. And uh, I moved with my pops for a while. So, I, I, I guess it was a blessing for me to be able to have that hands-on experience with both parents. Like, you know, a lot of people don't have that. But I had it, and I'm thankful for it. Let's say somebody's watching this interview and yeah. they have to deal with the separation of their parents. Yeah. Of course, circumstances could be different for everybody. For sure. You sound like you had it on the good end when there's other people I do interviews with with separated parents. It's not so good. Yeah. But do you have any advice for somebody going through a separation themselves? My advice to them is to... Um don't don't be angry about the situation. You gotta take that negative shit, turn it to a positive situation. And and a lot of times, like when two people make a child, like it's it's like it's it's an adult situation. You don't know what the fuck going on. You don't know this person cheating on this person, whatever going on, whatever the case may be. You gotta look at that shit and uh take it for what it's worth and uh appreciate the parent that you do have and uh don't have that negative shit in your heart towards a parent. You know, you block your blessings like that. So just uh, appreciate your situation and make the best out of it what I could tell anybody that may be going through a situation as you uh, asked me about, you hear me? Now, going back to you growing up and, and financially, yeah, I remember there was a point in the interview you said something about getting made fun of sneakers and this, that, and the third. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you ever go to any school where they had school uniforms? Uh, and New Orleans, like, the uniforms really didn't come into play till like, a certain point of time. It, I, I can't remember when, when the shit transferred and everybody started wearing uniforms, but, like, uh, yeah, like, by the time I got to, like, middle school and shit, everybody wore uniforms, maybe, like, elementary. You know, I, I didn't... I had to wear regular clothes and rotate probably like fucking two, three outfits. <laughs> like, but uh, by the time middle school came for me, it was uniforms and uh, you know shit. Motherfucker still was coming to school, uniforms with Gucci sneakers on and shit like that. Like, you know, I'm talking about young motherfuckers, like, you know, popping up to school fresh still, like you could still tell who was who had it. In a uniform, so the uniform really still it helped, I guess, but it it was still like a separation for us, like who had it and who didn't, like the have and have not type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it sounds like it's a uniform that wasn't head to toe uniform. You no, know, it wasn't like there was a little freedom there. Yeah, just a little bit, and that little bit probably was like enough for a lot of error. But eventually, like they started getting hip to that shit. But by the time it, that happened, like, I probably was out of school. They started saying all white sneakers, or all black sneakers, you know, uh, you know, no colors in your shoestrings for people representing their neighborhoods or whatever the case may be. They started getting hip to the era, you know what I'm saying? But when I was in school, it was a little bit freedom for people to, like, showcase and, you know, shit on them motherfucker. Like, and they still come to school, shit a shot on them, like, you know what I'm saying? And, Motherfucker still was hurting who was hurting, so. Also financially, you mentioned that you had to get it on your own. Yeah. At one point. Yeah. I how, mean, how young we talking? Man, I, man, I'm talking about, I, I, I learned to hustle quick, and I don't mean necessarily, like, people take the term hustling and just relate it to, like, illegal activities, but I was, like, fucking, seven years old washing cars, cutting grass. I remember like uh, bringing candy to school and um, just hustling candy on my backpack. Like, so, you know, that little shit I was doing kept my mom from having to buy me sneakers, kept my mom from having to worry about if I got money in my pocket for the field trip and shit like that. So, you know, at some point in time, that, that hustle transferred into me helping my mom out, you know, in the household and shit like that. So. That's what I mean by getting it on my own. You know what I'm saying? Like, Did it ever turn into street activity? 
did it ever go from candy and these types of things, <laughs> washing cars to? I mean, you know, for me, you know, it's, it stayed as candy. You hear me? <laughs> for me, it stayed as candy, you know. Yeah, candy. They can't see me got some candy, you hear me? Now, what about the job route? Did you try the job route? Job? Having a job? Yeah. Nine to five? Fucking right. I'm a, I, 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 I'm a certified electrician. Like, you know. So, I ain't never had no problem with getting no job. But that shit ain't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like working for the man ain't for me. And what I mean by the man is like, the system, how the system set up. Like, it's cool to get a job to work towards doing some shit that you want to do. Like, I teach my kids, like, get get this money your own. Like, you watching these kids on YouTube, they eating. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't be a consumer. You know what I'm saying? I'm a firm believer, like, having your own shit. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I definitely like the job shit. I played the job shit. The, the job shit went for me, you know? How young did the job route start for you? Oh, man, I man, I, I, I got my first job at 15. Like, my mom's ain't played that shit. You know what I'm saying? My mother, like, you know, real, like, positive, blue collar, go to work every day, you know what I'm saying, type of person. And, and you know, that, that was a positive influence on me. And it taught me, um, it taught me hustle. You know, I just watched my mom bust her ass go to work. That shit taught me hustle. That shit taught me I could wake up and hustle. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. What was the resume looking like for you job-wise throughout the years growing up? Um, First job at 15. Yeah. And uh, I kept that job. What was it? Man, I worked at Win Dixie, man. Okay. And uh, what'd you do there? I fucking uh, stocked and buggy man and shit like that. And then uh, what was next? The military. I went to the military. You heard me? Air Force veteran. And, um, I uh, I was like, I trained pilots on how to use the equipment, shit like that. Work on night vision goggles and. Uh, when I got out, I transferred that to like uh, electronics, and then uh, became an electrician. Mm. And then I started like doing it, like taking side jobs and learning how to transfer like the mental state of hustling to that shit. You know what I'm saying? And then I became a barber in the midst of that shit. So that's my pretty much my whole job resume, like working, you know, throughout the years. With the Win Dixie gig, was that tough? Nah, man, I had I had the most fun ever working that fucking job. <laughs> like, you know, I was young. They had a gang of females worked out, and um, it was cool, man. Shit, I get hungry. I used to go just take the snacks out, whatever. You know, it was cool. Like, I, I ain't had no complaints. That's probably one of the best jobs I ever had. I wish the pay was a little bit more at the time, but it was it was cool. Any. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Any crazy stories dealing with that job? Anything that happened out of the norm with the Winn-Dixie gig? Oh, man. Uh, I worked in Winn-Dixie in the hood, of course. That motherfucker got robbed a few times. Shit like that. Uh, <laughs> who's getting wild in the break room and shit like that, but that's about it. That's all, all I can think about at this time, but I don't, ain't nothing really like, out, I mean, it's norm, out the norm. Besides shit like that that happened, like, I can't think of nothing wild. But for somebody else, that shit might be extra wild. But how wild did the girls get in the break room? Oh man, uh, sex? Shit, you might People get some having... skull or something like you know. You might get that 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 skull waxed off or something like that. You know what I'm saying? It was wild. Like it, it got that wild. Like you know, yeah, like sex wild. You partake. Uh, I mean, you know, I, I was young doing my thing or whatever or not, you know. I did a few things. 
Did anyone ever get in trouble for that? Did anyone nobody, ever get caught? Nobody got caught, I guess. You know, I ain't, I ain't never got caught with none of the new shit like that. I, don't, I can't speak on nobody else, but not on my knowledge, you hear me? So. You quit that gig or got fired? Nah, I, um, I, I, I quit it, man. Like, uh, I quit it because uh, I, I move with my pops, man. Like, I couldn't work the job no more. Like, commute, the commute was just too much, you hear me? But I, I didn't get fired. Military, you do this after high school's over? Yeah, after high school's over, I hop right in. And uh, the shit was a different experience for me. That right there. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, just curious, though, growing up, uh, how big was gang activity back then in New Orleans? Well, I mean, back... I don't know if you consider gang activity. It's more neighborhood shit. Like, uh, at the time, you know, it wasn't, like, I don't know how that shit went with the gang shit coming into New Orleans. I can't really speak on that, but it, it happened. But when I was coming up, it was more like wards. You know what I'm saying? Like, motherfuckers from this ward don't get along with this ward, you know, and that should have, I mean, it's still relevant, that type of situation, but it's not as serious as it used to be, I guess. But um, that's that's that was like the gang activity that I know of in New Orleans. Like, you know, motherfuckers repping their neighborhood. I see. Yep. Now, what about school? What kind of kid were you in school? How would you classify yourself? Characterize yourself, I should oh, say. Oh, man, I was cool. Cool as fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I, I, I was cool. Like, I, I was getting hoes and shit. Like, I went hoes and money. Like, I went in school. Like, I wasn't really, you know. I was real I was real laid back, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Still is. Like, but it's just, uh, it's just a little bit more aggressive now, being a man. You know what I'm saying? Understanding how the world works. You hear me? You were part of the cool crowd, or you were just a cool person? Cool nah, clique, or just a cool person? Nah, I, I mean, I did me. Like, you know, I ain't really had considered too many people, friends. Like, my partner came up, go, like, you know, we went to school together, grew up together, you know what I'm saying? We just dropped this project, um, full breaks together, or whatever. So, like, me and him really, like, we clicked up in school, we did our thing. We was just chilling. It wasn't really like no cool crowd or click, but I could jam up with the coolest or however it go. Like, you know what I'm saying? It was just like, oh, that's dude. Dude be fresh. Like, it wasn't like no, oh, he's the man on campus. Like, nah, it was like, a dude be cool and he do his thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so were you ever part of a click or crowd uh, while you were in school or no? Nah, I really went into the crowds, man. My pops always like uh, told me like, you know, you you can't get in trouble doing your shit by yourself. So I took heed to that, and I really like ain't um I went with the click shit. I mean, you know, in my neighborhood was riding. I had to ride with that. But other than that, I went with the click shit. Fuck, I live out. I got, if I don't ride with y'all and fight, you know, then shit, y'all go fight me when I get home. Like on some shit like that. Like, but. Other than that, I wasn't worrying about no click. You know what I'm saying? Like, that ain't my thing. You were into girls? Yeah, yeah, definitely. How young were you when you lost your virginity? Oh, man. Man, I wasn't expecting that motherfucking question, man. I can't even remember, really. This shit was so long ago, man. I was still probably like a preteen. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't a teenager yet. You know, like, definitely preteen. Was that normal back then, that age from where you're from, or not uh, really? That nah, was, I mean, you were ahead of your time. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Because I remember, man, these girls weren't fucking like that when I was coming up, man. Like, you know, now nah, that shit's crazy, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, you had to damn near tell them you love them back then, and they was your girlfriend and shit like that. Now these motherfuckers... I believe these girls pursuing these little boys nowadays, you hear me? But um, I probably was a little ahead of my time, you know, but not too far off from the norm, just, just a little bit, 
you know, the smidge of the head of my time with that shit. So, you, rem you remember who you lost it to? Somewhat, yeah, I do, yeah. Was it spontaneous? Was it premeditated? You Man, knew you were I, gonna lose it? Nah, I, I mean, I pursued her. I, like, that now I can remember, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, fuck. I had game back then, too. So she, I, she went with the move I, I told her to go with. So, you know, it is what it is. Like, uh, it happened. And, uh, shit, it happened. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you being active that young, were you ever worried about teenage pregnancy back then? Fuck no. I don't worry about that shit. I, I, anything like that young, I, I thought, uh, I probably was more worried about STDs that, but that young even. I, I had no concept of sex like that, like being that young. I thought you'd get burnt uh, soon as you put it in them or something like that, even with a condom. I ain't had no clue of how to sex really work. I really ain't had no business fucking that young, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. And um, fuck, I learned from it. And I try to, I, 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 I tell my kids, man, I really do tell them if they could wait, go ahead on and wait. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, you got time for that shit, really. Motherfucker don't need to be fucking that young. Them little girls don't even know how to wipe themselves, right? You trying to fuck on them and shit, like, you know. You still probably pissing on your nuts trying to fuck on something. So, you know, it's just, you know, it's just one of them things like looking back on it. Um, if I go back and talk to myself, I tell myself, take my time. Yeah. Now, how young did music start for you? Five. Five, four, five, six years old. Did you do any music classes while you were in school? Did you join the band? Did you do chorus? Things I, of that nature? I did do the band. I did the band thing. Um, I just couldn't get with that shit. But uh, I definitely like uh, did the band thing, did the drums, did the saxophone. Um, I was fascinated with playing a saxophone, man, because my um, pops always used to listen to like Kenny G and shit like that. And I was always fascinated with how smooth that shit sound. I felt like it fit my personality. But um, as I got older, man, I just got more into other things, and and I I I was passionate about more being a writer and rapping and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But five was like I knew music was for me. How long did you do the band for exactly? If you can remember, man, I did the shit like one year in middle school or something like that, like couple couple years in elementary school, and I was like. I'm not doing this shit no more. Why not? Um, I, I don't think I like the structure of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was on some like, I seen where I was going at. It's like, that shit like a community within a community, man. Like, the people that's this tier treat this tier like this, like some football shit or something like that. I ain't with that shit. Like, I, you know, I. I feel like ain't no man better than another man. But, you know, everybody got an entitlement to feel how they feel about being confident with themselves. But just because you've been playing the fucking drums for 10 years don't mean you got the right to mistreat the person that played it for one. So, you know, that, that seeing shit like that, I, and favoritism shit, I ain't into that. Like, you know. Did you freestyle? Did you battle rap other classmates? Were you oh, into yeah. stuff like that? All the time. Battle rap, freestyle in the back of the class. I probably got in trouble beating in the back of the class rapping. You know what I'm saying? Getting kicked out of class for shit like that. Uh, like, you know, I was always in the music. Anybody that know, like, me rapping ain't shocking to my community or anybody knowing or me being on whatever... Uh, whatever pedestal they look at me at or whatever left pedestal they look at me at, you know, that's not a shocking thing for me to be sitting here doing a DJ Small's Eyes interview, so. Were you any good at it? Were you good at freestyling? Man, I, Were you good man, at battle what? rapping? Man, I was, that's how I came in the game, battle rapping, 
fucking ranking on a motherfucker, showcasing arrogant, like, you know, like, that's me. Like, you know, that's that was my thing, really. You know what I'm saying? Good enough to kick something right now? Oh, man. Fuck, I could kick shit like Bruce Lee. Stunt double like Jet Lee. Off to the top of the throne, you can't see me. Fuck, get by, focus if you want to see me. Shit. Diamonds flash so hard, they in 3D. It won't be long before you see me on the TV. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just, I'm just sparring with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Did you participate in talent shows back then? Man, no, no. I, I, I really like was uh finding myself, and like I, I ain't know if I really wanted to have an original song, rap song, in a talent show back then. Like, and uh, in my city during the time where I was coming up, talent shows like it was all about dancers. You know what I'm saying? Like, so. I didn't know, I understood marketing then. I was like, how the fuck am I gonna get up and go next to one of these dancers, all these dance groups, and that's what the people come to see. And I'm trying to rap some shit that they never heard before. I don't think that shit go really go that well. So that kind of like uh, would help me from doing it. You know what I'm saying? Did you have a song you were promoting back then while you were in school? Man, I, I, I had... Uh, I had this tape, you know what I'm saying? Me and uh, a couple dudes out the neighborhood, um, Free Slugger, uh, 18 Will. Uh, it was a couple of us, man. We had a song, we had a tape. We took the two fucking radios, one playing the music and the other one just recording and we rapped into it and uh, we was handing out the tape at school and shit like that. So like, I ain't really had no song we was promoting. We just record songs like that, and like, kind of get like a buzz at school. Let other motherfuckers know we was rapping, and like, that's kind of like uh, how being serious about rap got introduced to me. Like, just like damn near elementary school. You hear me? Made money off of it. No, man, I ain't understand all that shit at that point of time. I just wanted to be heard. Aside from music, did you uh, get involved with sports at all growing up? Yeah, man, I um, fucking played baseball, basketball, football. I was really good in baseball, you heard me. But um, my pops was a coach, you know what I'm saying? So I'd be at the park a lot, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, playing ball every season, whatever. Varsity? Man, I, I when I got to uh, high school, I chilled out on the sports, believe it or not, you know what I'm saying? I ain't really, I wasn't really focused on that shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, I could have played varsity, whatever, though, but I just didn't do it. I wasn't interested in it. And I think my pop's passion for wanting me to play kind of like withdrew me from wanting to even play, you know what I'm saying, really. But, you know. That's why I drew the baseball. He ain't shit about baseball. So. Now, when you graduate high school, before you choose the military side of things, yeah, um, and and they give these awards called senior superlatives, like best dress, most likely to succeed, biggest flirt, things yeah. of that nature. Did you ever win one of those awards? Man, nah, I was nominated for a couple though, but I ain't win them. You know what I'm saying? Like, this in a yearbook or whatever. If I had that motherfucker, I'll show y'all. Like, I had, like, nomination for, like, best braids or some shit like that. And, like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like, most, like, it wasn't the normal ones. I was nominated for a few, though. And, uh, you know, yeah, I'm thinking about that shit. Yeah, I did get nominated for a couple of them. I ain't winning on them, man. Yeah. You do graduate. Yeah. You end up joining the military. Yeah. And that's another conversation we'll have. Yes, sir. But uh, <laughs> did you ever do ROTC or something while you were in school? Fuck no? no, man. Let me tell you how I wound up getting in the military. First of all, <laughs> they was giving out the ASVAB test. And I was like uh, trying to get out of class. But the class I was trying to get out of this dude always, like my pops was a substitute teacher at my school before. 
So he always would hit my daddy up and let him know that I missed class. So I was like, fuck, I got to get out of this class. I think I was trying to get some J's or some shit like that. And I was like, I'm not going to go to the next class. I'm going to take this ABVAB test. So I was like, I'm going to miss dude class. I'm going to leave out after I take the ASVAB. And I'm going to go do whatever the fuck I was trying to do. Because I wasn't trying to go to class no more for the rest of the day. I remember the shit like it was yesterday. I went in that motherfucker. I took the ASVAB. I played Abigadab on that shit. I was like, A, B, C, D. The shit I ain't know. The shit I knew, I answered it. All the other shit. I, I really spelled Abigadab. And, um... The scores wind up, for the shit I did know, the, my scores wind up being high, so they kept calling the house, kept calling the house, kept calling the house. And uh, the Navy actually wanted me to like join some intel shit or something like that. And uh, shit all really started off for me just trying to get out of class. But uh, it started to really become a reality when I sat down one day and was like, what the fuck am I going to do when I finish school? Like, you know. I'm going to go to jail, get in trouble. Like, that's what the fuck I'm heading for. I don't have a plan. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to work this piece of shit-ass job, not making no money, or what I'm going to do. So the shit all really started off from me trying to get out of class. Yeah.